Hello everyone, so today I am here to convince you all to read the book The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. Let me begin by saying that I have never even heard of Ursula K. Le Guin. I am not familiar with her work at all. This is the first novel I've read by her. Um, because I read it for my sci-fi literature course here at college. So therefore I am not familiar with any of her other works, I'm not familiar with any of the themes or like ideas that she puts into her novels, um, so if I'm missing something or I'm saying something that's weird or wrong, it's because I've never read one of her books before, this is my first experience with her, um, and I absolutely loved it. Let me begin by just getting out of the way. This is a 5 out of 5 stars for me, and this was put on my favorites list, um, which I've been putting a lot of books on my favorites list recently, and that's very weird for me. I usually have maybe one favorite a year, but recently it's just been so many novels are going on that list, and this, although it is not like a favorite favorite, like it's not like Three Souls or Wind Up Bird level kind of thing, this is probably one of the best books I've ever read. Like narrative writing and like kind of uniqueness wise is probably one of the best novels I have ever read before and it absolutely blew me away especially because I was not expecting anything going into this novel. Uh, in our course we had read a couple books before this and I wasn't impressed or I'd already read them so this one took me completely by surprise and I ended up absolutely loving it. This book was obviously pretty incredible. It is only 180 pages and I have over I think about 30 tabs in this novel right now, and I was talking to my teacher and he was definitely like, this is a book that deserves a second reading, um, and I already 100% agree with that because I really do already want to go back and just see if I notice anything else, because this book deals with so many different ideas and it's so complex and built on top of each other, and it was just such a good book. This book deals with race, inequality, gender, sexuality, uh, wanting to change the world for the better, overpopulation, war, all of these very, very difficult topics extremely well in a very unique way because it takes all of those different ideas and issues that are in our world and puts them into a sci-fi context, which makes it a little bit easier to digest, but also definitely hits home with what it is trying to say. To give a brief, non-spoilery summary of this book. This book follows a man named George Orr who has decided to make himself stop sleeping. Um, in this world you have farm cards which like allow you to get medicine and he has been abusing um, his friends and his own to get sleep medication to make him uh, just like fall asleep without dreaming. Um, but in this world if you don't dream you will die. So he is sent to a therapist named Dr. Haber and um, he tells him, I don't want to dream because my dreams change the world. He explains it in a way that it, there's a very specific passage on page 47 um, where he says basically if he dreamt that there was a pink dog in the room, the world around him wouldn't just be like, okay, it's a pink dog and stay in the dream. It would alter the entire universe to incorporate pink dogs. So either it would be a white poodle or dog or whatever that was dyed pink for some reason, or the universe would actually incorporate pink dogs into nature and make them a normal thing. So when he dreams about certain things, they come to life and change reality. Now Dr. Haber at first is a little skeptical until he realizes what George is saying is true. And there starts our story with George who just wants to stop dreaming and he just wants to stop changing the world, he doesn't want this responsibility on his head, um, and Dr. Haber who wants to use this power for his own means. This book goes everywhere. It goes from just simple like changing a photo on the wall to killing six billion people to aliens landing on Earth. And it's a ride, it's amazing, it deals so well and so uniquely with such difficult topics, and it just was so, like, you had to think really hard with this book. This was not a book that you could just pick up, and it's 180 pages, but I wouldn't recommend reading this all in one sitting. I recommend reading a couple chunks of it and really thinking about it and absorbing what you're reading, because it's just one of those books that you have to think about really hard. And again, I do think this one is a book that will get better with a second or third or fourth reading of it. So that is the basic summary of this book, and obviously I 
adored it for the plot. I thought it was incredibly unique and interesting and a beautiful, unique way of looking at these ideas and themes in her book. Um, but also, Ursula K. Le Guin's writing is gorgeous. Like, it is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read in my life. It is not overly flowery, which I find most people on booktube and in the book community say beautiful writing is this really flowery, pretentious crap. Her writing is this just beautiful, simple, but every word means something. Every word is there for a reason. We looked at it in my class and like just focused on her wording and her punctuation of things because when something big exciting is happening she stops using punctuation to show the panic and insanity of the situation. Um, there are beautiful passages like the very very beginning of this book where it is describing one of or uh, George Orr's dreams is gorgeous. It's beautiful and it's flowery and it's pretentious as hell but it's gorgeous. Um, and then just the rest of this novel, it just reads like a poem. Like, I feel like you could take any passage of this novel and just split it up a little bit in different, like, ways and make it a poem. Basically, this book just makes you think really hard about things. Like, that's all I know how to say about it. This book just really makes you think. It's like, wouldn't it be really great if this world had plenty of resources and every single person had food and water and there was clothing for everyone in every country in the world, but what if that meant killing six billion people off? Or what if, like, the world did not fight each other? What if humans did not understand, like, no war, there was no war happening between people, but that means aliens come and declare war on you instead, because humans just have to be in war all the time, but not against each other, like, it's just one of those things that's just like, it's a give and take, and it's just, this novel did everything so perfectly. <laughs> Overall, this novel is just a beautiful piece of work that is sci-fi mixed with literary fiction, mixed with magical realism, mixed with everything, and it's beautiful, and I really, really highly recommend people picking this up. I will 100% be picking up more of Ursula K. Le Guin's um, works because this apparently is not her most famous or her best work, which I am absolutely blown away by because if she can do better than this, I am going to be, I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do because this was nearly perfect. And I am going to be picking up the rest of her work very soon because I am very interested to see how she could possibly do better than this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of The Light of Heaven, and if you guys have read this book, definitely leave down in the comments what you thought of it, um, and if you haven't read it, please tell me if you have decided to pick it up because of this review, and I love you all, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!